Well, hello again. I just thought I'd do a very quick video about the uh, the Artemis One mission, or the Artemis uh, uh, vehicle in general, I suppose. Um, I was uh, disappointed to see it not fly the other day, but apparently uh, I've been looking around at what people have got to say about it, and uh, to be honest, I haven't uh, looked into this um, uh, in depth. I haven't really done very much research, but... Um, might have been the angry astronaut was saying that uh, they overpressurized the first stage, which is uh, this bit here, this bit here. It's about that much of the rocket, which is uh, sort of 560,000 gallons of liquid hydrogen, and uh, popped a gasket, so they got a, they couldn't uh, they couldn't launch it because um, what would actually happen was because hydrogen, smallest molecule um, there is. <clears throat> you can't have leaky gaskets <laughs> and they have to keep it uh, they have to keep it topped up with liquid hydrogen so you see when these things are on the launch pad they have pipes going across to them and they detach just before the uh, the rocket takes off and when the pipe detached it didn't seal the ga the, uh, the the gasket didn't seal so the liquid hydrogen would have just poured out that would have been that it wouldn't have uh, wouldn't have flown or well, not very far anyway might have got off the pad um, <clears throat> so they've got to fix that seal so that when they when they release the pipe it seals it seals correctly uh, so that's what that's all about the fuel for the Saturn V very much uh, much easier to handle that was just uh, kerosene and liquid oxygen um, didn't use liquid hydrogen in the uh, first stage of the Saturn V <clears throat> um, now as we can see the Artemis is a little bit smaller 322 feet compared to 363 feet um, it's about what 41 feet it's 41 feet shorter it's also about 300 tons lighter if you look at the um, the stack uh, launch stack weight of uh, Artemis it's about two and a half thousand tons whereas the Saturn V was about 2,800 and something tons I think uh, you can see that the uh, the maximum thrust of the Saturn V 7.5 million pounds and the maximum thrust of Artemis, 8.8 .8 million pounds. So the power to weight ratio on Artemis is considerably better. It's got less weight to lift and more thrust to lift, lift it with. Um, and uh, for all that, we can see that it can actually carry a little bit more. So 101,400 pounds, call this 96,000 pounds. So it's What's that? What's that? Five, that's six, six thousand pounds. It's about three tons. It can carry about three tons more than the Saturn V, uh, the actual payload weight. So, um, there's a little astronaut down. I'll put a link to this below. This is uh, from Mashable. I'll put a. <coughs> um, where is he? There we go. There's for scale. There's a six foot astronaut there. There's the Statue of Liberty. There's the Saturn V. And there's Artemis One. Now, um, Artemis uses um, it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of a parts bin moonshot uh, Artemis because it uses uh, motors, uh, the liquid fuel rockets, uh, the liquid fuel rocket motors. <laughs> I've been up long. Uh, are on the bottom here. There's four of them. They come from the space shuttle. They've all flown in space before these motors. Apparently, the oldest one's about 28 years old. Uh, the solid rocket boosters, uh, also uh, designed crib from the shuttle program. I think some of these rocket segments, the solid rocket fuel uh, boosters, some of these segments have flown before on shuttle missions. All these liquid fuel motors have all flown on shuttle missions. So a real parts bin uh, moon rocket, uh, this one. They've actually had to put an extra segment in on the uh, solid rocket boosters. So these are slightly longer than the, um, the shuttle boosters. I think they weigh about 850 tons each, these things. <clears throat> so, uh, let's have a little look at the, um, let's see what else we've got here. We've got, yeah, there we go. So if we look at this, this is the Artemis booster. Terrible production, production value, of course, as usual. Wouldn't be a mumbling video without that, really, would it? But uh, we can see the different segments in the Artemis solid rocket booster. 
and I think this has got uh, so it's got a centre aft section, centre centre, centre forward. I think uh, one of these is additional. I think the shuttle had two of these, whereas the um, the SLS Artemis has got three of them, so it'll burn for longer. So that's the that's the main difference with the uh, with the solid rocket uh, boosters. Let's just have a quick look at this. Uh, a picture of this. Uh, what the hell's this? I don't want to do this. Go away. Okay, so here's a picture of the bottom of Artemis. Uh, you'll notice the lack of pimples. <laughs> so here we have the four shuttle engines, liquid fuel shuttle engines. Uh, there's liquid hydrogen, liquid uh, oxygen being fed to these things and uh, looks like this is a big orange pipe here big orange pipe if you look at the outside of Artemis this goes right the way up to the liquid oxygen tank at the top so I'm guessing this is where the, the liquid oxygen is pumped down into the uh, where it's uh, sort of turbo pumped into the engines now you've got these little squares uh, painted on these areas here and that and that is so that um, <clears throat> they've got video cameras pointed directly at these areas. So if anything goes wrong, they've got a very good idea of where it went wrong. Now, I think these are actually slightly different to the shuttle boosters. Um, I, I can't get some really good pictures of the shuttle boosters, but they seem to have um, more O-rings in this section here than the Artemis ones. Now this might be because of the O-ring failure that caused the destruction of the uh, the Challenger. Um, but certainly with the cameras focused on these areas, you know, if there is an issue at takeoff, they do get any leaks, they'll be able to see, you know, whereabouts it's leaked on the O-rings. <coughs> of course, they're gonna have a similar problem with um, temperatures as the space shuttle. They're not gonna be able to launch in cold temperatures because of the, the O-rings presumably are made of the same stuff. The boosters are made by the same company. Uh, they're going to, um, and there's only a certain amount they can do with that sort of thing because they do have to uh, seal and expand and that sort of thing. So what, what they're made of um, is probably going to be uh, a similar material, if not the same material as the O-rings in the shuttle. As I say, some of these, some of these sections are ex-shuttle sections anyway. They've already flown in space. They've been recovered and repacked. Uh, and we can see the attachment points here. When you consider these are 850 tons, whole vehicles 2,500 tons. Both of these boosters, the boosters on either side, provide something like 75% of the liftoff thrust. It's good to see that they've got some uh, eight mil bolts there, holding them to the uh, the main structure. <laughs> Feeble attempt at humour. I'm sure they know. I'm sure they know what they're doing. So yeah, I was really disappointed that the thing didn't fly in the other day. Um, I'm sure it. Uh, I'm sure it will. Um, as they say, all this stuff is sort of uh, tried, tried and tested. Most of it's flown before, so they've just uh, they've just done some calculations, bolted it all together, and said, yeah, okay, that will uh, that will get us to the moon with the sort of payload that we're interested in getting to the moon now. This um, is the liquid oxygen tank here. This is all liquid hydrogen. This, this stuff, it, this is full of liquid hydrogen, or down about here anyway. From there to there, liquid hydrogen. So it looks to me like they've got a pipe coming out of the side of the spacecraft and going all the way down to the bottom and then into the, um, where it would uh, inject the liquid oxygen into the engine manifolds down here. This pipe is on the, Pipe is on the outside of the vehicle, and again, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure they know what they're doing. I mean, it looks a little odd. Um, look, I don't recall the Saturn V having any um, pipes on the outside doing uh, doing that sort of thing. Assuming that's what it does, of course. Assuming that that's what it does. Okay, so. Uh, that's uh, that's that, that, that's pretty much it. I just thought I'd have a very quick look at Artemis and um, do a, a quick video on it. Um, 
Now these are, these are the shuttle boosters. If we look at the shuttle boosters, they do look slightly different, don't they? It looks like they may have, look, looks like they've got more O-rings in them, if that's what these are. O-ring here. More O-rings than the, uh, in this bottom section here, than the, uh, the Artemis boosters. So it may be that the, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> it may be that they've engineered out or as much as they possibly can, um, the, uh, the O-rings in that bottom area where the actual rocket motor, uh, where the actual thrust is uh, coming out of it and where you've got all this <coughs> um, uh, all this um, gas pushing against the sides and uh, trying to escape. Obviously, it's all got to escape out the bottom to propel the thing in the air. So, and that's uh, that's just a very very quick look at it. So it does look like uh, there are some there are some changes. Let's hope they're good enough to uh, good enough to get the thing off the ground and uh, on its way to the moon. I think they're going to try launching it um, fairly shortly. Uh, again, I confess I haven't done a huge amount of research on this, but I don't know whether they're going to have to trundle it back to the uh, the vehicle assembly building, take it back to the workshop, in effect, and uh, repair it, or whether they're going to be able to repair it on the pad. It certainly sounds like they know exactly what's wrong with it. So uh, once it's defueled, um, maybe they can literally just uh, get a couple of guys out there to go and change the gasket. If it's split the tank, of course, it's going to be a different story. Uh, but if it's just a case of uh, the, um, you know, the detachable hydrogen line uh, not sealing because of a valve, gasket on a valve on the side of the vehicle, then they may be able to change that on the pad and uh, there'll be a way. I suspect um, the Chinese will be falling about laughing watching this um, because uh, I think they want to... Uh, they want to get a, a crewed mission to the moon, and they know very well that uh, you know if they got the first woman on the moon instead of NASA, it would be a significant embarrassment to NASA. Um, it's, it's certainly, because uh, Artemis is all about putting the first woman on the moon, isn't it? You know, it's called the Artemis Project, sister of Apollo, and if the Chinese put the first woman on the moon, well, <laughs> that's uh, yeah, significant. Uh, Everyone at uh, everyone at NASA is going to have a face like they're chewing a wasp, I would think. So uh, we've got to keep an eye on uh, keep an eye on what the Chinese are doing. They're having a lot of success in space, of course, the Chinese. So uh, not beyond the realms of possibility at all. I think that uh, they might um, beat uh, beat NASA to uh, putting the first woman on the moon, especially as you know this is Artemis One. It's not crewed. We've got to wait for Artemis 3, I think, for a crew to actually set foot on the moon. And it, as Artemis 1 is pushed back, obviously the other missions are going to be pushed back. So <clears throat> it, might be, uh, it might be a few years yet before they actually set foot on the moon. Um, so, uh, so there we go. That's, uh, that's just my take on... Uh, my take on the Artemis mission. I certainly wish them luck and I want them to succeed. Um, and, uh, you know, the sort of noises that they're making, I think, are uh, perfectly reasonable because they're saying, well, you know, back in the 60s, they were under pressure. There was a space race on. They needed to get the first man on the moon. They needed to beat the Russians to the moon. So they would take, they would take risks that they wouldn't take today. Today, there is no space race. And uh, they can uh, uh, they can make sure it's absolutely right before they launch. Maybe that hasn't occurred to them that the Chinese are probably, are probably trying to beat them to the moon, <laughs> and they may actually be in another space race. <laughs> um, but um, if they do wake up to that fact, <laughs> I would not want to be a NASA astronaut. And uh, one of the NASA engineers, I remember, was being interviewed about Apollo. And, uh, you know, they've got this escape tower thing on the top here, this rocket that uh, if there's anything goes wrong with this, it fires and it takes the astronaut, takes the crew to safety. And he said that, um, he said it was a psychological safety factor. It, it, um, by the time the system detected that this was all exploding, 
um, and uh, ignited the rocket, the uh, crew would have already been vaporized. So uh, it was uh, purely a uh, uh, psychological comfort for the crew. Oh, we did add that, um, of course, they never told them that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well I think that's about it. I've uh, I've showed you that it's a parts bin special, parts bin moonshot. You know, shuttle motors all flown before. Oldest motor, twenty eight years old. Solid rocket boosters. Most of these segments have flown before. But as NASA say, they've, well, most of it's flown before on shuttle missions, so it's, it's tried and tested technology. They know the motors, they know they're good, um, and uh, it looks like they may have done some engineering with regard minimising the amount of O-rings. Um, and that pipe, I mean, that's presumably bringing the liquid oxygen down from the top tank, being on the outside of the vehicle, um, yeah, a bit of an odd one, but um, I'm sure, uh, as I said before, I'm sure they know their stuff. And it's not going to get superheated as it goes through the atmosphere and uh, fall off. Um, <laughs> well, let's hope not. Um, yeah, a dodgy bit of ed editing there, but uh, sorry about that. Something I thought was worth mentioning, and that is, of course, that uh, Artemis is all, all about... Uh, putting the first woman on the moon, as I said earlier. So if you think about it, it's sort of, uh, it's another dent in the uh, uh, the uh, argument of the loonies that say that uh, NASA never put men on the moon back in the 60s. And that the Russians were, uh, the Russians were cooperating with them. Well, <laughs> certainly not cooperating with them now, are they? So if they had any dirt on the Americans, <laughs> we'd be hearing all about it. But um, <clears throat> um, you know, putting a first woman on the moon is a fairly significant thing. And the Russians never said to the Americans, look, we'll support your fake moon landing if you support ours. And then, uh, you know, maybe six months later, there's a fake Russian moon mission, you know, where the, where the Russians put a, supposedly put a, a woman on the moon, you know, and then the, the Americans support that. So it's another, it's another dent in the moon landing deniers argument, isn't it, really? Uh, where's, the, uh, where's the fake Russian moon landing with the, uh, the first, putting the first female cosmonaut on the moon? Um, yeah, it's just uh, complete and utter nonsense. I don't know why uh, I thought I'd mention that actually in this, uh, in this video, but um, I suppose whenever I think about moon landings and I think about the, uh, the terrific um, uh, feat that uh, NASA pulled off by engineering the Apollo uh, spacecraft and getting those guys to the moon and safety back to the Earth, um, it, uh, I just find it irksome when you get uh, these, um, these, these, these people that have absolutely no understanding of the technology whinging and bleating about it and telling everybody uh, that it couldn't have been done, even though they know nothing whatsoever about it. So perhaps if you come across one of these uh, these idiots, these fake moon landing idiots, you might want to just ask them. Say, okay, well, if the Russians supported the uh, the fake American moon landing, well, well, where's the uh, where's the fake Russian moon landing? Where's the where, where's the uh, where's the the Russians putting the first female cosmonaut on the moon in the sixties? And why would why wouldn't the Americans have supported that? <laughs> <laughs> Complete and utter nonsense, isn't it? <clears throat> okay, well, uh, I just thought I'd tack that bit on the end. So, uh, as always, thanks for watching, and um, perhaps I'll catch you again. <laughs>